Craig Stocks with Craig Stocks Arts and today I want to talk about a way to approach a common problem in photography and that's dealing with scenes where the dynamic range between the brightest areas and the darker areas is too much for your camera to capture all at once. And that was the case with this scene. We have a foreground that uh, the sun was still actually behind some clouds, so the foreground was actually under cloudy lighting conditions. But the sky was brightly lit by the sun, and there were really just a few clouds floating around. And in a situation like this, whether you're using film or digital, you're not going to be able to capture all of the detail in the foreground and all the detail in the bright sky all at once. And an easy way to deal with that is to take two exposures, one exposure for the sky and one exposure for the foreground, and then blend them in Photoshop. And actually the process in Photoshop is pretty straightforward and it uses some of the foundational tools that you use over and over again in Photoshop, and that's the concept of layers and layer masks. So if you're new to Photoshop, uh, this tutorial hopefully will help you understand how layers and layer masks interact and how you can use them to improve your image. Now in this case, I anticipated that there would be a problem, so I took two exposures. And what I did, first I pointed my camera up towards the sky and pressed the shutter release halfway to lock the exposure. And then I recomposed and took the first frame, which actually gave me this image. So I have lots of information, lots of detail and color in the sky. And then without moving the camera, I just took my finger off the shutter release and then pressed it again and that caused the camera to calculate the exposure for what was currently in the frame and then it was mostly foreground so then the camera took this image. So that gave me the two frames that were almost perfectly aligned uh, with two different exposures. So the first thing I do is bring both of those into Photoshop as individual layers, uh, which there's lots of ways you can get them there. Uh, you can open two separate documents and drag one onto the other. Uh, you can use Lightroom or Bridge, uh, have features to open as layers. Uh, a variety of different ways to get here, but the end result is I've got two layers, uh, one with the the darker image where I want the sky and one with the brighter image where I want the foreground. Now the first thing you need to do is select both layers and then go under the edit, edit menu option and choose auto align layers and you can just use auto and what that will do is Photoshop will look at the two images and it will align them so that the features match up uh, as best it can. And then in this case, you can see there's a little bit of, of fringe left, so I might just come in with the crop tool. I press the C to select the crop tool. Just select the, the basic area and hit crop. And now I've got the two images aligned, and I've cropped out the extraneous uh, junk around the edges. So what I want to do is hide the dark area where where I have the brighter area available behind it to blend the two images together. And the tool I'm going to use to do that is a layer mask. And right now I don't have a layer mask on the layer. So the first thing we need to do is add a layer mask. And I'll do that by using this icon that looks kind of like a front-loading washer. And that will add a layer mask. And it added the layer mask, but and you can see that it's all white. And white reveals what's on the layer that the layer mask is on. Black on a layer mask conceals what's on that layer. And what we want to do is use black to conceal this dark area and that will let the brighter area come through. And to illustrate that we'll just go to the brush tool and we have black as our foreground color, 100% opacity and flow, and I have a a large soft edge brush and if I just paint on the layer mask you can see now in the layer stack there's a, a black squiggle in there and we can see that that's revealing the layer below it. So a simple approach with this image is just to paint over the foreground area on the mask with black and that hides the dark frame and reveals what's underneath. And if I alt-click on just the layer mask, 
that's what the layer mask looks like at this point. And that does a, a pretty convincing job of blending these two together. Uh, you can adjust the size of your brush and try to get more precise if you feel the need. Uh, the other problem that we have here is the sky now really looks too dark. Uh, because the exposure was exposed for the sky to make sure we had detail and all of these really bright highlights, uh, the blue and the contrast in the clouds makes it too dark and it just doesn't look natural. Uh, one, one way to fix that would be to just reduce the opacity of the dark layer. And as we reduce the opacity, that brightens the sky so it starts to look more natural and everything blends together uh, better than it did before. And that actually gives us a fairly decent result with just the, those two simple steps. You know, sometimes reducing the opacity doesn't work quite as well and you may need to add an adjustment layer that affects just the layer with the sky. And the way you would do that is to go to the adjustments panel and we'll add a layer a levels adjustment layer and we want this levels adjustment layer to affect just the dark layer and we'll use a feature called a clipping mask and what that clipping feature does it clips this adjustment to this layer so that it only affects that layer and we can accomplish that either by right clicking and choosing create clipping mask or we can also use this icon on the adjustments panel and that will clip this adjustment to the layer below it. But now if I change the brightness with this levels adjustment, it affects just the layer below it, which is the sky layer, and we can adjust its brightness again so it looks natural. Uh, it's a bright sky so we want it to look bright, uh, but we want to have detail throughout. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, we've used two layers, a dark layer and a light layer. We used an, a, a mask to mask, the, mask out the dark layer and reveal the brighter area underneath. And then we clipped a levels adjustment layer to that top layer to adjust it. Uh, and then just, as a, uh, just to show one more feature, if you decide you need to adjust the brightness of this foreground, we can select the foreground layer and again we'll add a levels adjustment layer. And the, the way the layer stack works, uh, the layers only affect what's below them. It's like you're looking down from the top. So in this case, this, this levels adjustment will really only affect the layer below it because it can't affect in a layer that's above it. So if we change the brightness of this foreground, we can adjust the brightness of the foreground. If we wanted to add more contrast or make any changes there, we can adjust the brightness of the foreground now independently from the background uh, and get the best possible result from the blend. That's all there is to it. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me at craigstocksarts.com. Thanks, and have a nice day.